Hi everyone, it's Russell Lowe speaking and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to add shadows to a couple of the architectural elements in the drawing. So uh, to begin with I'll turn off or hide uh, those layers just so I get the black exposed again and so it's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. And in this case I'm going to create two new layers. Uh, the first layer is going to be called guides and the second layer is going to be called shadows and in fact let me open that one up again and I'll change the highlight color in this one to blue so it's a bit easier to see and you can see those highlight colors here. Yellow is just a bit hard to see on the black, on the white background. Uh, you can see that both of those layers were created above the source image and below uh, the rest of the layers in the document. I can move them around, uh, but it's good to have them below the black just in case there's any overlaps. Right, so on the shadows layer, I'm going to create a north point. So I'll hold shift and alt and with the ellipse tool selected, it'll drag out a circle. Uh, you can see it's got a black stroke and a white fill. I'll just knock out the fill uh, and uh, leave it at that uh, 0 0.35, 0 0.353 uh, width. And then I'll just use the selection tool to make sure it's not selected. Grab the line tool. And then uh, I deselected it so it would be easier for the line tool to find the center of the circle. So if you struggle there, uh, deselecting helps. I'm holding shift down to uh, make sure that the line is on a 45. And I'm waiting for it to intersect with the path. And then I'm just letting go. Uh, in this case, I'm going to turn the stroke up to say 2 millimeters. Again, deselect. And now I've got a north point, and this is on my shadows layer. So now I'll, I'll uh, lock that shadows layer, and I'm going to go into my guides layer. Now, to do my guides, I might make them uh, like a bright green for the stroke, and uh, just so it's easy to see against everything. Grab my line tool, find that anchor point there on the corner, and then again, holding shift down, I'll drag a line out, uh, which is too thick. So let me just make it down to say 0.35 again. And you can see I've got one line on a 45. With my uh, selection tool selected, I'll hold down uh, Alt and even shift will help it intersect with these points. Uh, again, Hold down Alt so it duplicates it and Shift can help and wait till I get the tool guides saying that I'm getting some intersection. And so those are the uh, those are the guides that I need for this uh, element here. So I can go back to my uh, shadows layer. I might lock that uh, guides layer, unlock my shadows layer and then uh, I'll select another color so that it's not... Actually, you know what I'll do? Cancel that. I'll create a global swatch. And the reason why I'll do a global swatch is because later on I can change the color and it'll just update everywhere. So, uh, create a new swatch. Now, if you can't create a new swatch, if this is grayed out, it's because the stroke is um, uh, turned off. So if, uh, see it's grayed out here, if I just turn the stroke on to anything, any of these colors, that'll come back again. And it'll base it basically on that. So actually let's do a, a gray. And, oh no, let's do a blue, so then I can change it to gray later on and show you that. Uh, so new swatch, it's got this sort of blue color, it's global, and uh, let me call it, um, you know, RL for my initials and blue. Okay, it's up here. You can see it's global because it's got that uh, little triangle on the highlight on the corner there. 
I'll bring it down to into this group so it's part of my Harvard Pastels group I guess that doesn't make a lot of sense but that's okay and it's showing up here get my pen tool and remember I'm on the uh, shadows layer make sure you go on the shadows layer and then with my pen tool selected I can then use my guides oh look I didn't uh, quite get there close enough so control Z to go back and then zoom in a little bit with the alt uh, middle mouse wait for the guide to tell me it's anchored and in fact that one hasn't gone uh, right there too so uh, now I'll finish this line by going control and just clicking somewhere out here I'll go into my direct selection tool and I'll grab that point and I'll just make sure it intersects and then uh, I can swap with the selected I can uh, just swap the uh, stroke and the fill and you can see it fills it in nicely so that's the technique uh, I can uh, lock that shadows layer and uh, I can start building this uh, second uh, form out with its shadow which is a little more complicated so making sure that my guides uh, layer is selected and, and unlocked I'll get my line in fact I'll just minimize the uh, or hide the visibility of the shadows grab that path there and with alt selected drag it across to here wait for it to tell me that it's lined up Now I'm doing that by eye because uh, it's not finding the anchor point uh, but hopefully with uh, this one alt and shift selected it'll be closer to the anchor point uh, hold alt again the anchor finds the anchor point there alt again finds that anchor point and then Alt and left click and drag again finds this one. So sometimes those tool tips are very helpful, other times they're just not quite there. Uh, so that's enough uh, that's enough guides for this element. Basically I'm attaching these lines to every single corner. Uh, so let's lock that guides layer, turn on the shadows layer again, unlock it. And now I use my pen tool and let's use this, uh, make sure that that stroke, uh, that color selected, that swatch is selected, sorry. So that's that one. Mouse over it. Yep, that's RL blue. So zoom in a little bit. Make sure I'm on my shadows layer. And then to find this anchor point, it's sort of hidden in the black. But if I follow the path down, I finally discover it. Scroll down to here. Now this one, I don't want it to be there. I want it to be on this one. And I've, holded sh I've held shift down so that it doesn't, uh, uh, so that it doesn't wander off the vertical. Find that anchor point. That anchor point and then here the same idea if I hold shift down I should bump into this anchor point because those lines are the same length click on it and then trace back around the whole thing once again swap the fill and the in the stroke and there we have it we've got just deselect everything we've got uh, the second shadow filled in make those guides invisible so you don't get a green tinge around these things and then if I go to my swatches and uh, highlight this RL blue I want my shadows to be say a, um, a grayscale so select grayscale 
and then with preview held down you can see I get some automatic updating and it changes both of those shadows at once rather than having to go in and change them individually. Go OK. Right, so that's the uh, that's the technique for creating cast shadows. Uh, just to recap quickly, you create a line of a certain length in a certain direction, and then you use that line. You use that line to project from each corner, and then you can trace uh, another line to create a shape on a different layer. So it doesn't uh, it doesn't upset these lines. It, it leaves them uh, intact because they've been locked, and you can just create your shape by tracing around uh, those anchor points. These are the elements which are uh, the most difficult to visualize for shadow making. But you can imagine always imagine the sun's coming across here like this, and what's it going to hit in the extreme circumstance? This is also a way to create axonometric drawings as well. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the final video which looks at creating them, uh, some titles and uh, a scale and some other annotation. Uh, thanks for watching.